Hello storytellers, it's Storytelling Ron. I don't think I should be doing this video, but I'm going to do it anyway because I'm excited and goofy. Oh, and there's music playing. Let me turn off that music. Um, I don't hear it because it's done through the speak headphones and I'm not using my headphones right now. Let me just turn off this music. Cool. Okay. Probably should leave it in there. Anyway, um, <clears throat> so I want to show you, this is just a sneak peek of my Apop... Apostles of the Apocalypse. Oh, it's post-apocalyptic, but Apostles of the Apocalypse. I don't mean like the end times apocalypse. I mean post-apocalyptic, whatever. Anyway, there's a whole timeline. It's all biblical, blah, 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 or follows the Bible. And, I mean, it's Bible adherent in a sense. It doesn't, it's, um, um, but, but I stick to kind of the, the grim reality of us. And this is, and these are all the assets I'm creating for the post-apocalyptic uh, game setting and, and also the sci-fi setting, right? Cause you could land on a planet and, and get these same things. Um, you know, there's cages and there's, 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 there's even like a Tatooine, you know, t kind of arid planet, um, map pieces and ruins and road pieces. And you can create your, this is the setting. You can create, um, a story or setting, you know, by putting these together and, and figuring it out. And I'm using foundry, which, I, which is really handy, but you could put this on a table. You could cut it out and and place it on a table, um, you, know, you know, I mean, you know, for how big, however big the table is, you're going to have to figure it out yourself, uh, the variations of, of what the encounter will be. But this encounter is, is mutant marauders and they've got their own little encampment in the waste in the, in the wastelands. And so I'm creating their, their set. Uh, I'm assuming that the players will go here at some point. Now, I, what I really wanted to show you is how I handle vehicle, vehicles, spaceships, combat. I'm really thrilled about this. I, I play tested it in the, in the sci-fi setting and it was, I, it was a lot of fun to me. It was way more fun than, um, the star Wars one. And, and, um, it was more like harrowing and freak. And, and anyway, I'm going to explain it. I'm just going to show you what it is. So, and you can type it out the stats of a, of a vehicle very easily, just like you can with the piece, uh, the players or the NPCs or the witch, you know, the warlock or sorcerer or whoever, you can literally just type out their character without even having to look anything up. That's, that's the, the strength I want to have, uh, for GMs is that you can like make up, uh, stuff that, you know, f for them to use. I do, but for the vehicles, I'm still, I still need to look at one thing. So let me just show you is this chart. I made a chart and it's sort of a graph, um, to explain the basic categories of vehicles and spaceships later on, uh, and how they handle. So let me just, I'm going to get these numbers and then I'll go over and explain them. Uh, so what I'm doing here is a war truck and a war truck is sort of a SUV or multi-purpose vehicle truck RV. Yeah. The, the MPV. So the handling is a 14 and the defense is a 10 and eight and eight. Okay. So the handling is 14, uh, defense I said is a 10. And the eight and eight. So eight, uh, the armor save is, a uh, is always a 12 D 12. And then the, uh, hull is eight. What was the other one there? I said eight, uh, hull is eight. Refuel is eight. Okay. So that, but refuel, it doesn't matter for the, for this type, for this game right now. Uh, I mean, it's for, um, when you, when you need to get fuel but they're not going to be obviously getting fuel. So the way I type this out is the handling is 14. Com is communications. If they have a radio or something, and these guys don't, so they're going to have zero or hive in whatever the defense is 10. So it's really, it's 12 is the regular number to hit something. Right. And if the number goes up. It's usually because they're fast. They have a shield or whatever for a vehicle, same thing, but it's a 10 because it's larger. Like a, t a 12 is like a, a basic car uh, size. And then, then as you get bigger and bigger, it gets easier and easier to hit. So defense of 10 is what I have for them, for this war truck. Uh, think of it like it could be a fire engine or it could be a, you know, utility truck or in the old days, you know, this is post-apocalyptic and the armor armor for everything metallic or metal or a vehicle is 12 D 12 armor safe. Uh, well, it's armor safe armor, um, scrap, and then save is a D 12. And I'm not going to give it any, um, uh, armor save beyond the d12 like if this was armored i could if i could say armor like armored armor you know military it's, so if since it's scrap there's not really any extra armor so it's d12 uh the hull is eight all right now check this out i'm going to give it some weapons okay i don't know the stats on these weapons very well let me 
I'm going to give it something simple. So I'm going to give it a, you know what? I'm going to make it up. I'm going to give it a, uh, uh, a cannon, like a small cannon, a, yeah, we'll just say a light cannon, light cannon. And it does D12 damage. And the, the, the to hit is going to be based on the drivers, which I'll put in there. Um, uh, and since it's a light can, it does D12, I'm going to give it a, a blast of D4. So it can kind of affect other things around it, right? If there's people. Um, and it can affect, uh, so since it's a blast D4, I'm going to give this a D10. So it'll explode around and, and do D4. I don't want to be too powerful. Uh, let me move that, space it out a little. D4. And that's it. And it just gets one shot per turn. Uh, you know, it's, oh, the range is um, far? Yeah, far. Okay. So what else does it have? It has, that's really it. Let me see. Let me pop open this guy. Okay. Oh, yeah, I got to do the parts. It doesn't have anything special on it. Let me do the parts. Now, this is important, parts. Uh, let me think about it first. Okay, I got some space here. D6, so engine. It's got engine, drive, which is sort of the part of the wheels, part of the the drive shaft, you know, all that underneath. Um, but I'm going to put wheels anyway because they're pretty pretty big wheels. It's got a crew area. It's obviously got a big cargo, so I'm going to do two of those because it's a truck. Cargo, cargo. Uh, it's got the weapon, so the cannon. Uh, what else? Uh, in a tower. Let me say a tower because it has like a, uh, gun tower, like where they shoot off of, right? Uh, nah, just leave it like that. Okay, cannon. So, uh, well, it's got a lot of crew. I feel like well, cargo and crew. Let me do another crew because I feel like that more crew in the back, uh, are uh passengers, back crew, whatever. Anything I can, you know, any part that you can kind of think of. So as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So D eight. Okay. So there's my basic, uh, war truck. And this is all I need for the game. I think, um, you know, I thought my head here, so I'm just doing this video. Well, so what does this mean? Handling 14. So whenever the vehicle wants to do something it has to roll B to 14, uh, the driver to accomplish that during a combat situation, during an intense situation, not during regular driving. So if they, if this starts coming out and starts driving around, tries to catch up to the uh, the other guy, you know the the enemy, it can. Um, uh, I do want to do this though far, but still at minus d four. I want to remind myself minus d six because the cannons are not that accurate. Okay, so um, handling's fourteen. So that's what it. That's what the role is, and that's and also kind of uh, for the GM. It also tells me about initiative, but remember they have a 14. So if someone has a handling of 10, I base it off of the, 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 the success based on the 10 and theirs based on the 14. So obviously the one with the 10 is going to have a better chance at, you know, making a higher roll. Now, whatever that roll is can, can give a bonus to the driver shooting or their, their, whatever next role they want to use it for to their defense, to, uh, shooting to someone on their truck shooting. Uh, like from the crew shooting the enemy so they can get a bonus based on their role, their handling role to, you know, and obviously it's harder for a 14 than it is for say the roadster here. Who's handling is a 10. You see the 10 here. So that's the role. And, and that, that helps me determine, um, who, uh, goes first, who, who gets the, you know, the advantage, the, you know, the positioning and all that. That, that happens in that. Okay. Also defense of 10 here. So see the, 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 the roadster has a 14, obviously harder to hit armor, basic hole. Yeah. This is a basic hole here too. I, I don't, you know, and, and, and just so you know that, yeah, you're going to see in my game that I'm going to, I I don't have a, cons you know, I try to have a consistency, but some, sometimes I get creative with, you know, basic hole or I'll do hyphen or whatever. So the, the little minutia details, I won't have a consistency. I will try to have a consistency when it comes to formatting, uh, out the, stats. So this one has a save D12. This one has a save D12. The D12 is if they does get hit, all metallic things have a starting point of D12. Now tanks and stuff will have more than that. They'll have a D12 and a D6 or a D12 and a D12, who know, you know, whatever, however much armored they are. And this also applies with spaceships and even flying vehicles. But, uh, those are uh, Gardner over there. Those are additional rules. 
the hull. The hull is eight. It's eight hit points. Just like a person has eight vitality, the, the vehicles also have eight. But it's eight per part. As you can see here, it's per part. So if someone does manage to hit and does eight, eight damage past the armor save of D12, I will roll randomly for what they destroy, or what, the, what section they hit. And, uh, and then that, that will affect the vehicle. So if they hit the engine and, and do eight damage past the D12 save, obviously, so they'll have to have a pretty tough weapon. Uh, the engine is out, blows up, you know, so that's the, the game over. The, 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 the vehicle is destroyed. Now, if they hit the crew, then I'll, I'll actually literally pass the eight. If they do like nine or 10 or whatever, I will give that to the damage to the crew uh, and they get, they get an armor save though. Um, uh, so, you know, uh, as well, but, uh, and then cargo can destroy the cargo can destroy the cannon, uh, make it ineffective to use because it's, you know, the structural integrity of the whole part of that part of the vehicle is destroyed. So same with over here and the smaller the vehicle, obviously the more chance that a very important part will get damaged. So it's really, that's it. It's really that simple and it's fun. And, it's, and, and, and I, in the spaceship one, they were just blasting, you know, shooting and different parts of the ships were getting destroyed. And, uh, you know, and they're still, uh, you know, no, no telling when that part of them is going to be destroyed. Now, if, if a section is already destroyed, I will move the the damage to the next one going down generally. But, you know, whatever, you, you, you can go up. It just, it just, you as a GM kind of decide, you know, if, if they've already taken out, say, this cargo here, and then you roll the same number, you can decide, well, just to go to the next cargo or go to the crew. And, you know, I tend to do it favoring the players, like, and then not favoring the, the, the encounter. And so I don't know how many crew yet I'll put on this war truck, uh, but they'll definitely have, you know, their own guns that they'll be shooting and, you know, they're ting, 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 you know, the kind of thing. I'll keep it simple. Anyway, so this is my, ooh, where's that war truck? Let me put it out here. And I, I'm using Foundry to um, sort of build, I'm, I'm using it to help me, uh, oh, that's kind of small. I'm using, I'm using Foundry just to help me build up uh, the game testing and to get play testing. So it's definitely, become handy that way and I'm keeping foundry very simple how I use it I'm not trying to use all the bells and whistles I'm just using what I need which is the um, uh, you know placing them down moving them around kind of uh, getting a feel for um, my dogs barking out the gardener next door neighbor gardener so so this is what they're gonna encounter um, let me see where's the baddies these are the, the road warrior mutant guys going to be in the trucks and these got their own stats you know i got them all figured out uh, very simple oh yeah oh, i'm only gonna have a, i don't want to have too many of the big dudes because this is kind of like the big guy with the with the heavy hammer here uh let me just grab a few more not that dude come on little scrappy guys i want to just copy and paste ah where'd he go where is he? There he is. Oh, I already did him. Okay. All right. So like they're gonna have to go up against these six. I probably need to do a boss too, a mini boss guy. So I'll figure that out. Anyway, so that's my. Oh, there is a mini boss. I got. Let me. I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you right now. Just whatever. So I do have a boss. Uh, mutant road warrior boss goes into combatants. Create new character. Find them, and I'm gonna show you all these assets I've been building up. See, these are all assets for the thing thingamajigger. So. This guy, mm, uh, actually, he's kind of like I mean, these are like medieval bosses, medieval mutant bosses. Uh, I think I'm gonna, I think I'll use one of these guys and then just draw, make him bigger. So I don't need this. I'll just, I'm gonna make this guy the boss. One, two, oh yeah. I'll just do that. That's cool. <laughs> actually, I don't. Then I don't need this guy. But eh, I'll leave him as a small. Mm, eh, I mean, oops. Eh, I'll leave him. But I'm gonna make this dude a little tougher and add more stats to him. All right, let me show you right now. Uh, I'm gonna make him IG R aggression. Oh, it's supposed to be two Gs there for aggression. Oops, aggression uh, six. That's scary. And spirit one. He's a kind of brave. Uh, social two. Secretive none because he's big. Not very secretive. Defense, so 14 armor D6. He's got, I'm gonna give him a, I'm gonna give him a D6 and his vigor is gonna go up to 16. And 16 is about generally the limit of what I do for humans, um, and at least in this category. 
Um, he is going to just use his heavy hammer. So he's probably going to be a doofus when it comes to getting shot at. Uh, I'm going to give him a D12 damage. Crit 19, slow. No drive, no none of that. Uh, uh, zealotry. So this is sort of, and this is, I'm kind of making this up or whatever. I mean, it's in, I think it's in the game. <laughs> zealotry. Uh, makes others fight to the death. So he can use his, uh, anyone around him, oh, I'm going to say D4, so, uh, D, D8 on Denouement. So I have a chart where when, 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 um, others, when you're in a fight and then you start beat winning, I uh, roll on the Denouement chart and generally they will flee or want to surrender or whatever that way. So you have a chance to evangelize, but when they're next to this guy, they're going to roll a D eight and thusly their chance of not, you know, surrendering. Cause if they roll a one, they surrender. But if they roll a six, uh, I think four, five or six or above, they, they continue fighting to the death. So that's what he has. So whenever he has his minions with him, um, they're going to, you know, want to stay. So that's it. That's, this is how simple the guy is and, you know, scary and tough. Uh, and he'll be, I don't know, driving in this, like kind of like in a Road Warrior movie, whatever. But uh, we'll see. And I'll got, you know, and I got some, put some slaves in here. Ooh. These are all caught slaves. They got to be freed. Um, And then probably have some regular workers around here, but they're, they're sort of like non-combatant slaves. Uh, I don't know if I want to use these guys. Or some other ones. Let's see. I have, uh, what else do I have? Eh, I'll just, uh, these look kind of silly and I mean, they're the red cult from the sci-fi, but I can just use them as, you know, the slave looking people that do what they're told kind of thing. Okay. Anyway, that's, that's, um, a little sneak preview of the Apocalyptic one coming, and yes, the, the Christians, missionaries, can they convert these mutant mar marauders? <laughs> uh, but really, the goal is to save these people and and save the the, the nearby settlement that is suffering uh, under the mutant marauders, and then maybe and then maybe um save these 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 people that are working for them. Can you see the mouse thing? Yeah. Okay, so that's um just showing you I'm hard at work. At, I know I I should be working on the Dark Ages one, <laughs> which I am. I'm working on the Dark Ages. I'm working on. The, I got a game today. Uh, play test for, with some actors for this show that they're they're doing. I don't even know if they'll make it here because they're in, surrounded by giant termites right now. <laughs> they're underground in a wasteland. Um, but this is the 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 storyline that they kind of know about that's building up around them. And I really appreciate that. I really love playing with people and then creating the world or the, you know building up the game and the world based on play playing it playing it out. Uh, I like playing it out to, to feel it and get a sense of it. Cause you can throw all kinds of ideas and make it all spectacular, but how much of that do you going to actually you utilize in a game? And I, and I want it, I want it to be simple and playable uh, and fun. Um, and most of it is about telling a story together than it is about overly complicated rules or, you know, or overly complicated stuff. And, and all the artwork I want is that you can use, not just look at it, but you can use it. I want it to be something you can use in the game. So it, any artwork, and I'm doing it myself. And the reason I'm doing it myself is, well, I guess I'm sort of an amateur do it your DIY guy, but I just want stuff that can just I can just immediately draw out. So I really force myself to get back into drawing. I really wanted to draw it out myself and use it and have it, you know, to be used for the game. Okay, so that's where I am. I'm doing it myself, and 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 I don't want to wait for uh, an artist to you know and get what I need. I want to. Use, okay, I need this. Draw it out. Put it in there. This is gonna work. Anyway, that's just how I work in my method, and um, this is this is stuff that will be you know part of the annual membership in the in the uh, on the storytellingron.com. Um, I may you know I don't know if I'll get if, if the Star Ages Kickstarter will succeed or not. We'll see. I've just obviously it's just a print a zine thing, um, and then I'll probably do a Kickstarter for the pop post apocalypse one. I don't know. Uh, I'm just trying to figure that all out as I'm trucking along here. All right. Thanks for listening. Hope this was cool and fun and 
po- apostles of the apocalypse. I want apostles of the post apocalypse. Apostles of the post apocalyptic post apocalypse. I don't know. I, I, I definitely it's post apocalypse. When I say apostles of the apocalypse, it sounds like a, a revelations thing. Um, I don't know. Anyway, I'll figure it out. All right. Thanks for watching.